What's your story? And what is the story behind Stranger Things? That's what we want to talk about in this second kind of episode in our series of Stranger Things, is we want to talk a little bit about the story and helping you understand what your story is and really understand what your quest for power is and then help you understand how to fulfill that story. Or, or maybe in this episode, we're looking more at how you're not getting what you want and where things are going awry for you. So if you're interested in finding a little bit more about your story, come along. Hi, I'm Brett, your favorite shrink, and this is My Five Minds. In My Five Minds, what we always want to do is we want to use this as kind of a user's guide to your mind to help you understand you and understand how your brain is working, how it's functioning. Today, in this episode, which is, I think, our second part of Even Stranger Things, we're looking at what's the story that drives you and what's the story in the story of Stranger Things. Where are things kind of going wrong? And that's what we want to look at particularly. What's broken? What's not working for you? Now let's go to the show itself and think about in our last episode, we looked at, at our cast. So let's start there. You have five minds. Thinking mind, creative mind, emotional mind, body mind, and conscious mind. And what we saw in our cast was that our thinking mind is Dr. Owens uh, in the second season and Dr. Martin in our first. We see Dustin as our, our creative mind. We see um, Eleven as part of our emotional mind, and we also see the upside down as part of the emotional mind. And then we begin to see that our body mind, the, the fight, flight, freeze response, uh, can create sometimes demigods or demidogs, as Dustin likes to call them, the demigorgon. Those are defense mechanisms that help protect us. Let's learn a little bit today about the storyline and how it matches with your story and where you are. So what is the story in Stranger Things? Well, it's still a little bit unfolding. We don't know the whole story, but I'm gonna guess this is kind of how it plays. Somewhere back in the beginning, Dr. Martin, Papa, as Eleven likes to call him, um, was looking for a way, a way to tap into the human potential, a way to tap into power, power that, that he knew was inside the brain and he wanted to try and somehow unleash it. He was successful. <laughs> he was successful in the sense of unleashing the power. A secondary problem came up in that he didn't know how to control the power. And then that's really the storyline for all of Stranger Things at this point is it's always about how do we control this? How do we control this? So not only are we trying to control the upside down that is really, especially in season two, has become out of control, but we're also learning how to try to control Eleven, which is the, one of the major themes in the first part and the second, uh, the second season as well. That storyline is your storyline. You, inside of you, are always looking for drivers, motivators, ways to get yourself to get things done, to do more and to be more. Well, there's an untapped power within you. It's negativity. What drives all of us? What gets things done at the end of the day? Stress, anxiety, fear, anger, frustration. Those are the things that get the job done. Now everybody's different and they have their own racket, their own way of playing that out. But most of the time when we need something done, when we need something to happen, when we need an extra pick me up and push, where do we go? We go to the dark side. We go to the upside down. We go to fear. We go to anxiety. And it does, it does its job. It gets the job done. I don't think to myself, hmm, gosh, it would sure be nice if I paid my electric bill today. That would be a really nice thing. 
That's not my internal dialogue. That may be how I talk to somebody else outside, but that's not how I talk to myself. How do I talk to myself? Oh crap, I gotta get that, I gotta get that electric bill paid. They're gonna shut off the power, come on. And I start thinking about all these terrible scenarios in my head. That's my driver. Fear, stress, anxiety, anger, frustration. Those are the drivers we use to get things done. Now, the problem with the drivers that we're using is that they come with negative consequences. The upside down starts taking over. It starts taking over our life. And the more we use those kind of negative drivers, the more we ourselves be kind of become empowered by it. We become trapped by it. We become negative. And that's the problem in the story is that we tap into power, but the power is negative, and then we're out there trying to fix it. We're out there trying to, to kind of do this balancing act between keeping the power, but letting go of the negativity of it. And you can't do that. The bottom line for you, the bottom line for me, is that you cannot hate your way to happiness. What that basically means is that we have this lie in our head, and the lie in our head is, if I get this done, if I take care of that, if this gets accomplished, whatever this is, then I'm going to feel better. And yeah, I'm mad at myself, or I'm pushing myself, or I'm stressed, or I'm anxious to get it done, but the fantasy, the lie, is that once I get it done, then I'm going to feel great. Then I'm going to feel awesome. And then, then the, the end will justify the means. It's a lie. That's not what's happening. What's happening is the upside down is taking over. What's happening is that you're becoming more negative. You're becoming more angry. You're becoming more frustrated. You're becoming more stressed. You're becoming more anxious. That's the problem. And we got to see that problem and begin to take control of it. All right? And so that's what we're going to really work on in this last and third episode. Now, back to lucid dreaming and back to your homework assignment. Because that's where we're starting to make some changes too. I want you to go back to your homework assignment. I hope you've been doing it. You've been going through your mind map. And as you've been having your dreams in the morning, you've been writing out in your mind map what's been happening in your thinking mind, your creative mind, your emotional mind, and in your body mind. And you've been able to make your conscious mind more aware of all that process. Now, step two is now I want you, as you wake up from your dreams and you think about your dreams, what I want you to do is I want you to take your dream and introduce a superpower. Now, you're not technically in your dream, you're just waking up in the morning and remembering your dream, but as you're remembering your dream, I want you to introduce a superpower. Something that you could do that would change everything. My favorite superpower, believe it or not, I know it's going to be hard to believe, my favorite superpower is controlling people's thoughts. I love going into my dreams and then getting into all the characters' heads and then making them do what I want them to do. So instead of hurting me, they're helping me. Instead of attacking, they're protecting. And that's the way I use my lucid dreaming. If you like this video, like the video. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you're not sure about something or want to ask some questions or want to share, some of the things that you've been learning in your lucid dreaming, put them down in the comments. I'd love to see them and love to share them. Again, I'm Brett with My Five Minds. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.